This video is brought to you by mywayteaching.com. Dear students, today we are going to start a next chapter. The name of the chapter is Motion in a Plane. So, already we studied about the motion in a straight line in the previous chapter. So, in this chapter, we are going to deal with the motion in a plane. And the contents of this unit are introduction first we are going to see the introduction part then we are going to study what are scalars and what are vectors okay and then we'll study equality of vectors and not only that we also study multiplication of vectors by real numbers okay addition and subtraction of vectors by graphical method graphical method is one such method which is used for the addition and subtraction of vectors so we are going to study that particular method in order to add and subtract different vectors okay how to divide vectors that we are going to see in resolution of vectors and in the next part that is vector addition and it is performed by analytical method okay by using this method we are going to perform addition of vectors then we are going to study motion in a plane okay then motion in a plane with constant acceleration is a next topic even we study about relative velocity in two dimensions and we study about projectile motion and uniform circular motion at the last so in this particular chapter we are going to deal with all these different concepts and once i'll explain all these new concepts you'll understand it better so let us begin a first part that is introduction part coming to the introduction part see in the previous chapter we already developed the concepts of position isn't it you know what is this position is displacement velocity and acceleration isn't it we already studied about all these different quantities in the physics that is in the third chapter now all these quantities are required to explain about the motion in a straight line so we found that the directional aspects of these quantities can be taken care of by positive and negative signs only these two signs were enough to talk about directional aspects of these different physical quantities in case of motion in a straight line but in case of motion in a plane yeah in order to describe motion of an object in two dimensions that is in a plane or even in three dimensions we need to use vectors okay only positive and negative is not enough we need to use vectors to describe the above mentioned physical quantities in order to describe all these physical quantities we need to know about vectors in order to explain about motion in plane then what is this vector and how to add subtract and multiply vectors what is the result of multiplying a vector by a real number and all these questions are arising in our mind isn't it and we are going to study about all these in this particular chapter okay 
Uh, as a simple case of motion in a plane, we shall discuss motion with constant acceleration and even we'll uh, treat in detail the projectile motion. Circular motion is a fami familiar class of motion that has a special significance in daily life situations and we are going to deal with it in this particular chapter. So let us study all these different concepts in this particular chapter. So the first concept is scalars and vectors. So what is this scalar and what is this vector? In physics, we can easily classify quantities as scalars or vectors, isn't it? So in physics, or the, we can classify these physical quantities as scalars and vectors. Okay, basically the difference between these two is direction. Okay, because the direction is associated with vector but not with scalar. A scalar quantity is a quantity with magnitude only. This is very important. Scalar quantity is a quantity with magnitude only. Whenever we think or whenever we say a word scalar, we think about magnitude, not direction. Only magnitude comes to our mind. Okay. It is specified completely by a single number along with the proper unit. So, what are the examples for scalars? Which examples you can give? Just think. Whenever we think of that quantity, we cannot imagine the direction for that quantity. It's just pure magnitude. So, the quantity is based on only magnitude, not on direction. Yes, one simple example for scalar is distance. So, whenever I say distance between two points, we will never think about the direction. We will just calculate the distance between two points, isn't it? So, if I say distance between the point A and B, do you think about direction here? No, right? You just measure the distance between A and, A and B, isn't it? So, that is one scalar quantity. And if I want to give another example, I can give, yes, mass of an object. Whenever I say mass of an object is so and so, you just think about its magnitude, not about its direction, isn't it? So, this mass is another example for the scalar quantity. And one more simple example and a very practical example is temperature. Yes, temperature is again a scalar quantity. So now you are getting the difference, I think, what is the scalar idea, isn't it? It is just the quantity with magnitude. The rules for combining scalars are the rules of ordinary algebra. So what is this? This means if you want to add, subtract, multiply or divide these scalar quantities, you just need to follow the simple rules that you follow in algebra. Okay, in that you fall in solving the problems of algebra. What rules you follow for addition, subtraction, multiplication and division? The same rules you can follow in case of scalars also. Okay, I'll give you a simple example for this also. For example, if the length and breadth of a rectangle are, if I say the length of a rectangle is 1 meter, And breadth of this rectangle is given by 0.5 meter respectively. Then its perimeter is given by what? Some of its sides, isn't it? For rectangle, the perimeter is given by
yes 2l into 2b sum of the lengths of the four sides is nothing but perimeter and the length is given by 1 meter and the breadth is given by how much it is 0.5 so 2 into 1 is 2 and 2 into 0.5 is 1 so the perimeter is given by yes 3 meters the length of each side whatever the length is given length and breadth these two are scalar quantities isn't it and similarly this perimeter is also a scalar quantity okay so let us take another example for understanding the concept of scalars even better the maximum and minimum temperatures on a particular day are maximum temperature was 35.6 degrees celsius and minimum temperature 24.2 degrees celsius and we need to find the difference between these two temperatures that is the difference between maximum and minimum temperature and that difference is given by 11.4 degrees celsius isn't it yes so here this temperature is a scalar quantity and the difference what we got is again a scalar quantity And let me give you an another simple problem. A uniform solid cube of aluminium of side 10 cm. The side is given by 10 cm. Has a mass of 2.7 kg. Aluminium cube. It is having a side of 10 cm and mass of 2.7 kg then its volume is given by 10 raised to minus 3 meter cube okay volume is 10 raised to minus 3 meter cube and its density is given by yes it is uh, mass by volume that is given by 2.7 into 10 raised to 3 kg per meter cube so again side is a scalar quantity mass is a scalar quantity isn't it and this volume and density what we got is also a scalar quantity i think now you got the idea of scalar quantity isn't it what is this scalar quantity is so it deals with only magnitude not with direction so now let's see what is a vector is a vector quantity is a quantity that has both a magnitude and a direction and it obeys the triangle law of addition or equivalently the parallelogram law of addition. So a vector is a quantity which is having both magnitude as well as direction. Okay. And it uh, for addition, it usually obeys triangle law of addition as well as parallelogram law of addition. So, a vector is specified by giving its magnitude by a number and its direction. So, whenever I say a word vector, then two things comes to our mind. One is magnitude. Another one is direction, isn't it? Because it's having both magnitude and direction. Examples for this vector's velocity. Whenever I say a word velocity, it should have direction, right? Positive 
it should have some direction similarly acceleration positive acceleration negative acceleration zero acceleration so it is having direction also and even force the direction of force is very important as well as along with the magnitude of force isn't it in which direction the force is applied that is also very important so all these are the examples for vector quantities so usually vector uh, the velocity vector is represented by v okay since and even uh, usually a vector is uh, represented by an arrow placed over its letter because it uh, deals with both right magnitude and direction so we'll represent it with an arrow over it and if you are dealing with only magnitude if you want to say the magnitude of the vector is so the magnitude of a vector is often called its absolute value and we'll usually indicate it like this this is absolute value of vector or magnitude of a vector okay this is a different uh, you know different symbols that we use to represent vector usually it is represented with an arrow over it if you want to represent magnitude then we use this modulus symbol you got the difference between scalar and vector and examples for scalars and vectors okay fine in the next part we are going to study about position and displacement vectors